Hello, everybody. Breaking news. Just a stunning 24 hours. Silicon Valley Bank, which is one of the largest banks in the state of California and ba basically the bank to the entire technology industry, has now been taken over by California regulators and taken officially by control of by the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, the FDIC. They have nearly a hundred and seventy five billion with the B in customer deposits now under control of the FDIC. This is the first bank to fail since the 2008 financial crisis and the contagion and the worry for so much of this is absolutely huge right now. So let me take a step back and explain. First of all, this is going to be a huge test for the Dodd-Frank bill, for the stress test, for all of the you know so-called contingencies that regulators put into place after the latest financial crisis. Now, a lot of you are probably wondering, what the hell is going on? Why is this bank even failing? All right, so let's take a step back. Bloomberg actually did a pretty good job. Let's go ahead and put this up there on the screen. Number one. What is the Silicon Valley Bank? So Silicon Valley Bank, as I said, it's a big deal in the U.S. technology scene. It's a publicly traded bank, which is specifically focused on serving Silicon Valley and the tech startups. It does business, quote, with nearly half of all U.S. venture capital backed startups, 44 percent of U.S. venture backed tech and healthcare companies that went public just last year. It lists people like Shopify, Andreessen Horowitz, CrowdStrike, some of the biggest names in the tech industry as its clients. So what the hell is going on? Okay, so the bank, it's based out of uh, Santa Clara, California. It announced yesterday that it had sold $21 billion of securities from its portfolio and said that it had $2.25 billion share sale to shore up its finances. That was prompted by the highest deposit outflow at the bank because obviously there's huge downturn right now in the startup industry. So what happened? That unnerved a bunch of people who had a bunch of money inside the bank, including Peter Thiel's Founders Fund, Co2 Management, Union Square Ventures, some of the biggest names in the tech industry. They instructed their portfolio businesses to limit exposure and pull their cash from the bank. So that is what initially started the actual bank run that happened here. Now, as Bloomberg explains, quote, is it an isolated incident? Well, all U.S. lenders parked a chunk of their money in treasuries and other bonds that dropped in value last year because of the rapid rate hikes. But Silicon Valley Bank actually took it to a different level. Its investment portfolio went for treasuries up to 57% of its total assets. There is not a single other major bank in the United States that went above 42%. So their exposure to higher rates made it much more difficult. Quote, while higher rates have made all banks fret about depositors going elsewhere, most lenders have broad customer bases spread amongst individuals and companies. But Silicon Valley Bank specifically grew because of its focus on tech startups. So whenever your exposure to a highly exposed industry and you're almost 100% the banker for that entire industry, well, that has what's caused the failure here and the bank run. And now I cannot believe I'm sitting here watching a major U.S. bank in receivership in the, war, in the year 2023. It's absolutely, completely crazy. So the other thing is that this also coincided with the shutdown of something called Silvergate Capital Core. Now, at Silvergate, the problem was a run on deposits that began last year when cryptocurrency ventures had to withdraw a ton of cash to weather the collapse of the FTX Digital Asset Exchange. This is Bloomberg again. But the problem is that the withdrawals are forcing asset sales that locked in losses like with Silicon Valley Bank, like with Silvergate, and with a bunch of other people who are drawing down on all of their assets. Now, the real thing is, how the hell does a bank collapse in just 24 hours. So right now, there's been a big concern about the impact of rising rates. Obviously, we've talked about it here, about how it can induce a recession. And specifically, what exactly has happened is that the FDIC actually said in March that paper losses, quote, meaningfully reduce the reported equity capital of the entire banking industry. But the chief financial officer of Silicon Valley Bank told investors, quote, there wasn't any desire for a wholesale change in the banks available for sale portfolio. And of course, that all changed literally this month, which is what triggers the actual bank run in the first place. So obviously, this is a developing situation. Uh, it's very difficult to wrap your head around everything 
that's happening here. I do know that uh, the famous Michael Burry has said that this could be the next Enron, that this could expose a hell of a lot of shadiness that was going on in the technology industry. I'm just going to put that out there. I genuinely just don't know at this point. I mean, one thing that is undeniable is that this is a massive blow. Technology is 20% guys of the entire U.S. economy. I mean, this is a very influential industry and more so this is going to impact the S&P 500. This is going to impact everybody's retirement portfolios. This is going to impact just the broader U.S. stock market. It's going to impact the amount of liquidity and capital available to future startups. This is a landmark moment in the history of the financial sector, especially if we think back 2008 and the interceding years. Sure, technology was a huge part of the story, but financialization, Wall Street was at the center of that. This puts tech front and center of the latest potential financial crisis and of almost certainly a stunning event in the history of U.S. markets. So anyway, we're going to continue to monitor the situation very closely. I'm about to do another segment here about how some people didn't exactly get this one right, even though that they're paid to. But you can, I think, anticipate Chris and I are going to be talking about this one for some time to come. Just an incredible event incredible event. Shout out to our premium members and others who make our rapid turnaround on these videos possible. And uh, I know a lot of you are enjoying video on Spotify right now. That's awesome to see. So breakingpoints.com if you can help us out. But otherwise, I'll see you later, guys.